one thing that is great about cooking steak sous vide is it gives you such amazingly consistent results. You can nail your perfect doneness every time, whatever that is for you. The way sous vide works is we have this immersion circulator, which is a device that heats this water to a precise temperature of your choosing. When you put the steak in this hot water bath and it just hangs out in there, you can't overcook the steak. You can't cook it past medium rare because once the steak reaches whatever the temperature of the water bath is, it just stays there. Eventually, if the meat is in the water for too long, but we're talking many, many, many hours, four plus hours, the texture will start to change because the meat is still undergoing some changes in the water, but it's not cooking more in terms of doneness. That's awesome for entertaining because basically you can get your steaks going and then just let them hang out in there. You can talk to your guests, you can chat with your friends, you can have a drink. You're not worrying about whether your steak is gonna overcook. And you can use any cut of meat that you would eat as a steak, any tender, quick cooking cuts. So I'm talking strip steaks, ribeye steaks, porterhouse steaks, shell steaks, tenderloins, skirt steaks, hanger steaks. Uh, you can do short rib even. There's, you have a lot of options. Generally, you wanna try to use a steak that's on the thicker side, at least an inch, preferably an inch and a half or even two inches thick. With a thicker steak, you get this perfect doneness from the center right out to the edge with very little gradient, very little shifting towards more and more cooked until you get to the very outside where it's seared. It gives you just these amazingly consistent kind of perfect results, almost soullessly robotic perfect. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Once you have your steak, there's really one main thing to think about, and that's the temperature at which you're going to cook it. And that really just depends on what you want. If you love a very rare steak, then you're probably cooking in the 120 degrees Fahrenheit to about 129. From 129 to about 134, 135, you're in the medium rare zone. My hot water bath right now is at 130, so I'm aiming for kind of a low medium rare. From about 135 to 144 Fahrenheit, you're in the zone of medium, and then going above that, you're getting into medium well, and eventually well done, which at that point, I don't even know why you would use sous vide, because you might as well just cook the crap out of your steak in a pan, like it doesn't make much difference. I have a vacuum bag here, and I'll use a vacuum sealer, but you can also use just like a zipper lock bag, and you would use the water displacement method, where you put your meat in the bag, lower it into the water, and use the pressure of the water to push air out before sealing it. I'll start by just seasoning my steak. Salt. Get the other side. Oh, these steaks smell so good. It's got that aged smell. And I, I'll just use the excess salt that's on the tray to get the edges. All right, in goes the steak. Now I have some aromatics here. This is optional, but I'll throw in a couple thyme sprigs. I'll put one for each steak and I'll chuck in a couple garlic cloves. Let's get the vacuum sealer here and I'm gonna vacuum seal these steaks. Ready? And I got my 130 degree Fahrenheit water bath. So that's a nice medium rare. And in it goes in the water bath at least 45 minutes or about an hour to make sure that the heat fully penetrates to the center of the steak. And then I can go right away taking them out of the bag and finishing them in a hot pan or I can just let them hang out in this hot water bath at 130 degrees Fahrenheit for a few hours if I want. Only thing to keep in mind, if you are cooking at a temperature below 130 degrees Fahrenheit, there is a food safety concern because you're kind of in the danger zone don't leave your steak in the hot water bath for more than about two, two and a half hours. Not because it'll overcook, because you can make yourself sick later. Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't be hearing from it from some lawyers. My, my steaks have been chilling in this hot water bath and um, it's, it's, it's more than enough time. They're ready to come out and they're ready to be seared. So step number one is to simply lift the bag out of the water. I know these instructions are hard to follow. And we will dry them on some paper towels because this is a method where the steaks are quite wet. Also prepare yourself, they don't look good at all coming out of this bag. They're, they're pretty gross looking. I mean, that's not attractive. Ugh. The steaks in terms of internal temperature at this point are 
perfect. They're on the nose, perfect, medium rare because I cook them at exactly that temperature. But as you can see, they come out of the bag, they're wet, they're stewy, and moisture is really the enemy of good browning. You just wanna sear them really hard and really fast, get as good of a crust as you can get on them as quickly as you can to maintain that perfect interior that you spent all that time guaranteeing by cooking sous vide in the first place. And I'm gonna do a little optional step. I'm gonna add some butter, some thyme, and some garlic to the pan also to infuse with even more aromatics, but that's totally optional. You can just sear in a neutral oil like canola, vegetable oil, grapeseed oil, peanut oil. One other thing, if you have a torch, and even better if you have a searsall, you can get the steak in the pan searing from one side and torching it from above, trying to maximize that crust as much as you can. You know, be careful, flame, bomb. Also, <laughs> this is not technically the best tank to have on this top. You should get the broader ones so that it's more stable. So just pretend I'm, pretend I'm doing it right. Get some oil in the pan. As soon as we see this oil smoking, we're ready to get the meat in the pan. Very carefully, watch your fingers. Steak goes in. I'm gonna just drop, oop, that butter's soft. Drop that butter in. Drop those guys in. Every 15 seconds or so, flip it. And now I'm gonna, I'll do the sears all. Flip it again. Whoa, it came apart, right? There's a natural seam on the beef and it, and it came apart. That's fine. Sear those edges. Does it make the beef taste like that? So if you, if you use a torch alone, your beef is gonna taste like a gas station. It's disgusting. Ooh, and we're gonna come over here. The meat has been brought very slowly and gently up to precisely the perfect temperature you want. There's no need to let it rest and reabsorb juices. It's, it's ready to go. And it really is just a perfect medium rare. There's still a little bit of an edge. You know, you gotta sear it, but it's quite nice. It's perfectly cooked, super tender, and it's got a decent sear on it. It's not a great sear. And yeah, could I have seared it harder? Yeah, but I would have gotten more and more of a doneness gradient, at which point you start to ask, why'd you cook it sous vide? So what you get with sous vide is you get really the most consistent, perfectly cooked piece of meat to whatever temperature you want without even having to think about it. I mean, it's just, it could not be easier. And it's, you know, it's delicious.